Hi everybody, it's John Pushkar from Prussian Technical Services here again today with another episode to try to keep you safe and to try to show you some obvious things that can be a real problem for you in the world of fuels and combustion systems. Today, we're going to head into that mystery of life called flames. We're going to talk about what good flames look like, what bad flames look like. I'm going to show you some video clips. I'm going to take you into the world of burners that are self-destructing and how to start to understand if and when that's happening. And at the end of this video, you'll be armed with some really practical tips that you can use on a daily basis to find really obvious things that are going wrong with your industrial combustion and fuel train systems. After watching this video, you'll become the captain of obvious flame issues and burner issues at your facility. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. So the first really obvious issue is, hey, there's black or gray smoke coming out of the stack. Means our fuel air ratio is not correct. Likely means it's too rich. Now it could be other things. We could be quenching the flame prematurely by impinging it on some relatively cold surfaces inside like boiler tubes, but typically it's a fuel air ratio issue. Sometimes it's really severe. You could see it from a distance. Sometimes it's just kind of a light gray haze. Sometimes you'll actually see it on a flue stack or on an outlet cap or cover that's on a flue. So I've got a little video clip here I want to show you. Now you need to understand that this is for standard types of burners. This is not for a low NOx burner. Low NOx means low nitrogen oxides, and that's an environmental concern. Those are very special burners that burn at a relatively low flame temperature, and sometimes they are kind of yellow. They certainly don't look the same in many cases as standard burners. So I'm really talking here about standard burners, not low NOx burners. In general, you should be looking at flames that have a well-developed blue cone and there's little yellow or orange flickers coming off the back. Should not be deeply yellow or orange, smoky, lazy, with very little movement. Those are all signs of having way too rich of a fuel air mixture. So where do you look? How do you look at a flame? Well, typically the front of every burner there's a little bit of a sight port or a sight glass. That's typically just to indicate whether or not there's a flame, whether or not the burner is lit. You can't get good, useful information there. And I'm here to tell you, before you even go start to look, not every piece of equipment has an ideally located place for you to observe a flame. You see, to really observe a flame and get a lot of information, you need to have the flame coming at you. So this is the back of a boiler here that's shown. Some sight ports open right into the firebox. Very dangerous. If you have a change in firebox pressure, you could get hot flue gases coming out and hitting you in the face. Sometimes people use mirrors and protective gloves and special flame resistant clothing when they're using those kind of sight ports. In other cases, there'll actually be a piece of tempered glass there Always good to take a gloved hand and check that first. Make sure that there isn't leakage from there. Make sure that that glass is intact. Make sure the glass is clean. And only with the proper PPE and safety glasses would you then bend down and look through that. And of course, never, ever during a light off. There have been a number of people horribly injured when they look at a light off and there's a firebox explosion. Don't want this to happen to you. Here I'm showing you the flame inside of a thermal oxidizer. And you're going to see a period where it gets very smoky. You'll see that the shape is not well defined. That's a period where the flame's too rich. 
And then you'll see a period here where it's very sharp edged, high energy coming out from those bricks. That's indicating that it's too lean of a flame. Here's a premix burner that's showing too rich of a flame. You'll see the very yellow, almost orange type of flame coming out of this burner. Likewise, you can get in trouble if there's way too much air and the mixture is too lean. These are typically noisy, sharp edge, high energy types of flames. And I've got a little video clip to show you one of those as well. Here's another view of too lean, and I'm going to leave some of the sound up here. So you'll actually get to hear what it sounds like. Doesn't sound like this for every style and type of burner, but for this particular type of premix firing into a tube, it does sound this way. You'll also see the high energy movement of the flame, the very light blue pale color. There's lots of things you should be looking for when you look at a flame. You're looking for color, which I've discussed. You're looking for shape. You're looking for symmetry. You're looking for positioning of that flame. The flame should never be driving into anything unless it's specifically designed to do so, like some metal melting furnaces. So for example, if it's a boiler, you shouldn't be driving a flame or impinging directly on tubes. And you're looking for the flame to be stable. Stable means it's at the nozzles themselves where the fuel air mixture, the gas is coming out. If you blow this mixture out too fast, you get what's called blow off. In the cases where blow off is occurring, that flame could be several feet out from the burner. And it'll be looking like it's going on and off, extinguishing itself, relighting, and it could be doing this very rapidly. This is again where they typically get kind of noisy. It's obviously very dangerous, although you do have flame detectors. We never want to have to rely on them working properly. I've got a little video clip here that I want to show you on what a flame signal might look like on a burner management system display. When it comes to flame stability, you can't always evaluate it completely by trying to look at the flame. You should have somewhere within your facility the ability to actually see the flame signal. Oftentimes this can be witnessed on the screen of the burner management system display. On a Honeywell 7800 series type, you would be able to see the flame signal reading. Now the maximum voltage on these is 5.0 volts doesn't matter what the absolute value of the voltage is so long as it's stable, meaning it doesn't vary much. Here I'm going to show you one where it changes a lot. When you see this kind of movement in flame signal this rapidly, it means that you've got an unstable flame. And actually, with this type of burner management system, if you get below a certain voltage level and it stays there for a couple of seconds, it actually will shut down the equipment and close the gas valves and cease firing. The other thing that you want to be aware of is that if fuel air mixtures aren't correct, burners can start to destroy themselves. They can do this first with deposits that are in places that redirect the flame or change the ability of the burner to provide good mixing. This will eventually result in the burner itself starting to erode and disintegrate. You see, burners are typically made of carbon steel. Carbon steel starts to change properties at about 850 degrees. Most regular standard burners have flame temperatures that are 3000 to 3500 degrees. So if you actually impinged or touched this flame onto that carbon steel surface, you would melt it very quickly. So when you start to get deposits and you start to damage the diffuser sections, which guide the air, and make for fuel air mixing, you can then very rapidly get into a death spiral with the burner. You can see the damage in the lower right hand corner that's been done to this burner. The way that you might typically find this is the flame would no longer look symmetrical. Since this is a round burner with evenly spaced holes, symmetrical firing would mean it looks like 
one continuous round flame. Here's another burner that's had that same kind of damage. You can see this diffuser area, the part with the holes that are supposed to have air going through them, the larger holes, sort of like uh, rectangles. And then you see the little gas ring that goes around. That's where the gas would come out. And those bigger holes are meant to put a swirl to the air and get good air mixing. Well, you could see that we've started to disintegrate and dissolve some of this diffuser. And really, this is the beginning of catastrophic destruction of that burner. It's heading into a death spiral because obviously the more that we can't control the shape of the flame, the more impingement we get, the more melting of the diffuser, and it just goes away pretty quickly. At some point here, we could be driving flames into boiler tubes or driving flames into the sidewall of a furnace, degrading that refractory, and we're going to start to do big, big damage if we don't deal with it quickly. So here you're looking at what's called the throat of a burner. This is a refractory lining that helps to stabilize the flame and helps to direct the flame coming right off the burner. What you're seeing in the rectangle there is actually a carbon clinker. This is a place where carbon's accumulated because the fuel air mixture is so rich and we're not directing the flue gases in a symmetrical manner so they've all started to accumulate there. Again, another big problem, and you would typically see this looking into the throat of this burner. I want to spend a few minutes talking about what's called airflow burners. This is something you might see on an airflow burner that's got some impingement or the clogging of a diffuser. Remember I talked about symmetry? Well, symmetry here would mean no bright orange spot. Let's talk about why you might see something like this and what it might mean. Airflow burners start with a manifold that runs down through the center. See the green portion? See the little spark plug device? Well, below it then is a place where a gas line would get hooked in from the fuel train. The gas goes into this pipe down through the center of this burner. There are little holes drilled and spaced symmetrically through the length. And these are kind of nice because they're modular. You can make all kinds of different shapes out of them to accommodate your process, different lengths as well. And then the outside fins that you're seeing are typically stainless steel, and they've got different hole sizes as you come towards the center manifold and then spread out. So air comes in from behind. Some of the air goes through the holes, mixes with the gas coming out of that center gas diffuser, and that creates the flammable mixture that gets ignited by the little spark plug. These are used in grain dryers, makeup air heaters, uh, process ovens and furnaces. These are quite a popular style of burner. Here's one actually installed in an air handler. So we're looking at it from behind, from the fan side. There would be air blowing into the screen here. I'm showing you that gas distribution pipe or manifold that's running along the middle, and then you could clearly see the holes in the diffusers. And again, here's a little close-up, and you can see it's bolted in in sections, and even the little diffusers are bolted in in sections. So it's quite a handy design, and again, you can configure these in a multitude of ways. So one of the issues to look for, besides the impingement I already showed you, is if you have sections of one of these where it's actually not lit. Could be in one of the vertical sections, could be in one of the horizontal sections, but sometimes those holes where the gas comes out get filled with corrosion or some type of dirt or contaminant or scale that was in the pipe. So those occasionally need cleaned out very carefully and the burner manufacturer explains for you how to do that. And then you've also got to be very mindful that the airflow diffuser portions are always kept clean. And here's how really bad it can get. This is kind of an extreme. I haven't seen one this bad many times in my career, but they can get this bad. If you ever see one this bad and someone's still trying to operate it, obviously you should not do that. Uh, but this is how bad they can get. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is flame impingement. I talked to you about flame positioning. 
So flame length is also an important issue. Those airflow burners that I showed you, if you crank up the gas pressure too high, you can get a really long flame out of it. Sometimes it'll burn filters. Sometimes it'll impinge on an actual housing here, like you're seeing, and make for a real problem. So actually, manufacturers give you flame lengths in their design. So here's another thing to look for. The previous picture was carbon steel, so you saw the discoloration from the burned paint. If it's stainless, like in this picture, you'll see a different kind of discoloration. Here you can see that that flame impingement is causing the blue tone to the metal here that's in the bottom of the picture. So again, just by walking by should be obvious that you have a problem. If you'd like to know a whole lot more about observing flames and a number of other very important issues regarding flame safety, there's a prescient technical services online module that's called Combustion Basics that can give you a lot more details than I was able to cover here. Hi, it's John Pushkar. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to know about more ways that I can help, you can check out my website at www.prescientts.com. There you'll find information about the Prescient Technical Services Online School, my book, Fuels and Combustion System Safety, What You Don't Know Can Kill You, and also about some of the consulting projects that I've been providing to clients for the past 40 years. Things like implementing inspection and testing programs on a corporate enterprise-wide level, things like reviewing and commenting on capital equipment purchases that involve combustion equipment, and even being a legal expert if things go really wrong. Once again, thank you for attending, and remember, be safe out there. The life you save, it just might be yours.